So do you know what the best gas is for your car? And I don't mean whether you should use premium or mid-grade or regular. Do you know what gas you should buy? This came to me, I got to thinking about this a little bit, uh, as I was going through service bulletins recently on uh, back on my 85 IROC Camaro. And one of the things that you'll find in those starting in the, in the 80s was uh, issues with uh, fuel injectors in particular. So, so let's kind of dig into this a little bit. If you look at those old service bulletins, uh, on my 85 that was the first year for a tuned port and they ran a certain kind of injector. Uh, later on they changed those injectors and looking at some of the bulletins one of the reasons they changed uh, injectors was uh, to have uh, fewer issues with injectors uh, plugging. And again, the, the trend through, throughout uh, third gen Camaros and in beyond that was uh, you know, issues from time to time with, uh, with fuel injectors. Well, it's a bigger issue than just fuel injectors. And it's basically, it comes around to gasoline deposits. And, you know, gasolines, um, when you burn gasolines, they can leave fuel deposits. You'll find carbon on the engines and the combustion chambers and the ports on the valves and so forth. And this goes to be a problem even back in carbureted cars. But with the advent of fuel injection, and particularly with port fuel injection in the late 80s, now you're taking, uh, you're putting the fuel injector in the port real close to the valve, and then you're spraying the fuel actually onto the valve in most cases. Now again, if I'll go back to carburetors, uh, you know, you had a fuel air mixture that went past the inlet valves as well, and sometimes things would, would uh, you'd have deposits there. But as I said, right now you're, you know, you're targeting the fuel injector usually right on the valve. And so you can build up deposits in, in several locations. And you can end up with in, injectors that uh, the pattern goes bad because uh, of carbon buildup from, from fuel. You can have deposits on the intake valves. And you can even have valves stick because you get enough deposits on the intake valve stems that they don't want to uh, open and close. Um, I had I had a very good instance of that uh, a few years ago on a, a pressure washer of mine. Uh, I know it's a different kind of engine than a car engine, but um, I was using uh, some of the old gas that had been in the Camaro's gas tank for years and years. I was trying to find a way to use it up, and so I was mixing small amounts in with fresh gas and burning it in my small engines. Well, the Honda engine in my pressure washer didn't like that one bit. I did that for a couple of hours, and it started sticking the intake valve, and it wouldn't. You wouldn't get compression to start it again when you, you know, if you shut the engine off hot and let it cool. Uh, oftentimes, you couldn't get compression to get it to start again. And my solution to that was one: don't use any old gas in there. And the second was I started using the one fuel injector additive that I know works. Uh, from based on experience, um, which is uh, Chevron's Tecron additive, and I put small amounts of Tecron in in the fuel, and managed to get that valve uh, freed up, and I haven't any more trouble with it. But it was just a, a I'll call it a graphic example of what happens with fuel deposits, and fuel deposits can come from aged fuel, kind of varnishy, which was what that one was. But even fresh fuels. Uh, and even fresh fuels that don't deteriorate will still carbon up with temperature and in, under certain conditions. And if you go back to the 90s, that got to be a pretty significant issue. And the EPA came out even and eventually put in a minimum detergent standard for fuels in like 1996. Well, that still really didn't cure it, and I was working for GM in those years, and working in the powertrain world, and working with the fuel, uh, fuel and lubrication experts, and 
they were expressing concerns. We, you know, it was a continuing issue that with uh, carbon buildup, plugged injectors, and so forth. And so they started working on, you, you know, there was a lot of research going on on what should you do, how do you fix this. They kept at it for quite a long time and and uh, were working, I think, with their colleagues through SAE, through other uh, forums. They were working with colleagues in, uh, from other companies and, you know, working to find a solution. And if you want to see what the carbon buildup looks like, you could take a look here at this picture. Uh, this is from a presentation I found online. Um, it was actually to a presentation, I think, to API, API who certifies oils. Um, and it was from uh, Rebecca Monroe at General Motors. And uh, I don't know Rebecca, uh, but she's uh, probably based on this, probably in the fuels and lubes department, I would expect. But uh, in any case, she was giving a presentation showing carbon buildup on the engines. And you can see down in the lower left corner what an intake valve can look like. Uh, the upper left-hand corner pictures, uh, based on some pictures later on in her presentation, I think that is actually a direct injection fuel injector. And you can see the carbon on the end of that. So you'll get these byproducts building up from gasoline and you need to do something about it. Well, the something was between, you know, cooperation between other OEMs and General Motors and, you know, all the fuels and lubes engineers, they came up with a, a solution, and it's this top tier certified fuel. And it's not regulatory, it goes far beyond, it's much better than what the EPA requires. And it started in 2004. Um, I remember working with, again with the fuel and loops people in those days and there was a lot of work that went into this. And, you know, it, um, it was a way without getting federal regulations put in to try to get a fuel standard that would make our engines better, reduce warranty, reduce problems for customers, and uh, again, it, it, that it would be voluntary. And if you go to your General Motors owner's manual in recent year cars, you will find a page in there that talks about top tier fuel. Now, I know from experience there are a lot of people that don't ever read their owner's manual because it's, you know, it's about that thick and nobody wants to take the time. But if you go take a look in there, GM recommends top tier fuel. This discussion is to tell you why. So if you look even on, this is another slide from Rebecca's uh, presentation and you can see there's a treatment um, based on the EPA's requirement you still can get a significant amount of buildup on an intake valve. You can see the deposits there down in that lower left corner after a hundred hours in this particular test. And the one next to it says top tier gasoline at, a, at, at the correct treatment rate for a hundred hours on a standard test and that valve's almost clean. So out of this 2004 agreement we have this trademark top tier fuel because the EPA's requirements weren't good enough. Uh, in addition to adding detergents, uh, they banned something called MMT, which was a fuel additive uh, that was used. Uh, it, it was fairly prevalent in those years, and some places had banned it, and there were some places, localities that uh, permitted that. And it would build up and foul spark plugs, foul oxygen sensors. It, it was a problem, and we would really have liked people to ban it. But if you didn't, again, uh, the top tier uh, requirement was that your gas didn't have that. So it's test-based. So a manufacturer comes up with his own additive package and certifies that by running a certain set of tests to make sure that the gasoline is good enough. And then that package, once it's certified, they can sell it. It protects fuel injectors, it protects intake valves, it protects, protects from uh, deposits in the combustion chambers. And it has nothing to do with where, whether your gas, whether you buy 87 octane regular or 93 octane, 94 octane premium, every grade of gas at that station, if they've 
certified to top tier, all the grades have to be this way. And so it's a good, it's a very good method of making sure the gasoline is good. Now, let me take a half step back. Understand that, you know, gasoline is pretty much a commodity, right? They put it in pipelines, and I don't personally follow this, but I, I've known people who work in terminals, and they said, oh, you put the same gas comes out, you know, the, the truck pulls up, and whether it's one brand or another brand, they all get their gas from the same place. And I believe that's true. The difference is that once you get the fuel at the terminals, there they add their proprietary additive packages, and that's where they add alcohol if you're going to get ethanol-based fuel. And, and so you need to move from this, I'm going to call generic unleaded gas, into something that meets top tier by adding additives. Now, one of the resources I found, I was, I, I was out looking for resources to help explain this to you. And uh, on Top Tier's website, they have some references, and one of them is to the AAA. And you can see in this picture uh, three different intake valves. And there's a new valve. There's one that's treated with Top Tier gas, uh, run with Top Tier gas, and one that's run with standard um, U.S. spec gasoline that isn't Top Tier. And you can see the difference in the amount of deposits. If you really are interested in this and you want a deep dive, uh, AAA, who produced that picture, has a 34-page report on their website. I showed the link there. And you can go through and they kind of go through the... Uh, their mission was they'd heard about top-tier gas and wanted to know if it was worth it. You know, should, it, should uh, AAA customers, uh, you know, do, should they recommend it to their uh, members? And recognize the top tier gas may cost a few cents more. It's, I think it's only two or three cents a gallon, something on that order. But it all depends on the competitive environment because I've seen stations that were top tier right next to ones that were not top tier that were in competition and they were selling gas for the same price. So it's a, it's an it depends, right? If you go into Top Tier's website a little deeper, and again, there's a link on this page, uh, this is a copy of their current specification, their latest specification. But you can see that they list a bunch of references and tests, and their ASTM tests, some requirements from CARB, which is California. Uh, it was kind of interesting down at the bottom, there's a General Motors Top Tier Fuel Injector Fouling Test. And then the bottom one, which for those of us who are old Camaro enthusiasts, right, uh, is Southwest Research runs a, an intake valve sticking test using a 5 liter GM V8, which is probably very close, to, you know, I don't know which 5 liter V8, whether it was a Vortec or whether, but it's probably a Gen 1 uh, GM engine. And and they actually run a specific test to see if you build up enough deposits whether you actually whether you get the intake valves to stick and it happens especially if you don't have enough detergent in the gas here we'll talk about brands for a minute this is the day that I'm taping this uh, 2nd of May uh, this is a, a print off from the top tier website as of today so companies have to test, they have to certify. That little logo that you see up at the top of the screen there that says top tier, if they're certified, that should be on the pump. You should be able to see the top tier label on the pump. And every pump ought to have one. I believe that's a requirement. Um, so they should say top tier. Many of your brands may already, much of what you buy may already be top tier but you just never know. So you can kind of go down the list. Um, I happen to buy quite often at Costco these days, and theirs is top tier. Um, these are the ones that are. There isn't a list of the ones that aren't, of course. But 
you just you really do need to watch because even though I was a, a automotive engineer worked for GM and I worked for this stuff all the time and I even knew about top tier um, I hadn't gone and looked up the list and I was buying this um, there was a company this has changed but there was a company that sold under two brands and I used to buy from both brands interchangeably because I knew that the gas that they were owned by the same company and I was very surprised to find later on that even though it was the same oil company they had two brands one brand was top tier and one brand wasn't top tier and and again sometimes they were across the street from each other selling at the same price so I adapted and I switched brands because I know the difference that it causes for our engines so it's worth checking if you buy top tier gas from one of these certified stations this should be really good for you the summary for today you know are you using top tier gas if you are fantastic if you're not consider it strongly because it makes a big difference it really does now once you have top tier gas then then all the rest of the things still come back into play right are you using the right octane and that doesn't mean always using premium a lot of our engines are built you know most engines are built to run 87 octane in the US these days 87 uh, research plus motor over 2 R plus M over 2 um, that's our standard unleaded and then we have a mid grade at 89 and premium can be 92 to 94 roughly but if your engine will run fine on 87 or run fine on 89 then there's no benefit to buying premium you don't need to pay for more octane than you need and there was a time sometimes where the premium gas had better additives in it but if you follow top tier it doesn't matter anymore now I know there could be some folks who got you know the you know, work for a particular oil company and they'll swear by their additive package being better than a different additive package it's possible and if so that's great but if you go look at the top tier data everybody's top tier gas needs to keep the valves clean needs to keep the combustion chambers clean needs to keep the injectors clean and so there could still be advantages if you're gonna buy one over the other but I think you're going to find is that if you look at the engineering data it doesn't matter much um, storage in, in on my channel I've talked about you know what should you do when you store an engine with few, you know needing to use fuel stabilizers and how to deal with alcohol with ethanol fuels which is when I'm storing my old Camaro um, and it's got ethanol based fuel in it you know when winter comes I top that car off if you're going to go store your car for the winter and it has alcohol fuel in it you either want to drain the tank or you want to fill the tank and you want to use a good fuel stabilizer and down under the learn more links there uh, I pointed you to top tier gas and you can go look up these specs you can go look up the data I pointed you to AAA because you can go get a copy of that report and there are a lot more pictures in that report and explanations of the work that they did and the last one is one of my other YouTube videos on storing things with ethanol fuels and fuel stabilizers the little extra help so I hope that helps you out and that's all for now